all right so now in web project we'll implement login functionality so in web in pages we have counter home weather these are the default pages so first thing let me do this let me set both of these projects as startup project we'll do this properties multiple startup projects blazingquiz.api start and web start apply and okay okay so now when i'll start it it will start both api and the web ui we'll see what the web ui looks right now without anything the default template this is api swagger this is our ui and we have the same classic this home counter weather all these things now we want to have our login page but for login page we are not going to have all these things home counter weather this this left navigation we are not going to have it okay we will have the simple empty page with that login form nothing else let's do this so in web in pages we are going to create a maybe yeah we can directly have a login page mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or maybe let's create a folder auth slash login dot razor because we want to have one uh, register page as well right user registration so we have pages auth login dot razor let's set this is going to be a routable component so we need to add at the rate page directive to this and the url should be auth slash login save it and we should be good now now for this we don't need all that stuff the left navigation and top and all those so we need to have a different layout for these auth pages but the, the default layout it was this main layout which has all these things <coughs> so we'll introduce one more layout so in this layout folder only i'm going to create a <coughs> sorry new file i'll say maybe auth layout or empty layout empty layout dot razor now this is simple razor component if we add add the red page it will be a routable page component but if you want to make it as a layout we just simply uh, need to inherit this from this add the red layout component base so this empty layout we'll say inherit layout component base now it becomes layout and layout gives us this body property we are rendering it directly without anything no top no bottom no header left this and that nothing now on this login page we are going to have the layout default layout is main layout but we if you want to have some different layout then we'll explicitly need to define it so at the right layout here we'll say empty layout empty layout and now it is a part of that empty thing it will have nothing on this thing all right now let's define the ui for this so first thing we'll say let's say simply dev class container this is using default bootstrap so here on this container or maybe let's have dev class row which is uh, display flex by default inside this we are going to have a dev class and call sm4 maybe right now it will be on left but because this is display flex we can have mx auto it will have auto facing from on x axis from left and from right so it will move it to the center same thing we need to move it to the center uh, from on, on the vertical axis as well we can say my auto but it will not directly work because for y axis we need to have the height for that what we'll do on this row we will have the height so vh 100 so we put height so vertically 100 percent save everything and now it will be in the center all right now we are good we can have our login form here 
we are going to use edit form edit form needs one edit context or model we are directly going to use model so in at the rate code section here we will define our model private our model is going to be login dtu which will come from this blazing quiz share dtus now because this using the dtus we are going to use dtus on almost all the razor components we'll cut it from here we'll go to the underscore import dot razor on the root in this project we'll add that using here so that it can be used on all the blazor components all right we have this login dtu here we can say underscore model equals new and now we are good now we can use this underscore model on this edit form here we'll say model equals underscore model now here we are going to use data annotation validations data annotation validator now it will validate this model for data annotations but if you remember when we created this login dto we didn't add any data annotations so let's add first thing username is required and i guess that's all we need on this username length is fine we are not concerned about length but you can add length if you want to for password also we just need required we don't need anything extra okay now it will validate it now inside this after this we are going to have now we'll generate our form so we'll say dave class mb3 okay here we'll have a label class form label and here we'll simply say username and then we need to have a text box for our username so we'll use input text with bind value underscore model dot username then we'll add a bootstrap class form control and we are good this is the basic minimal setup we don't need anything extra okay username is done now let's copy this thing paste it div class mb3 form label here we'll say password and for this bind value also we'll say model dot password now because this is password by default input text is input type text but we need is password so on this we'll define this html type attribute we'll say password it should be password now we are not validating it we are not we are validating it but we are not displaying any validation message so we need to display that so for after both of these uh, input texts we'll use a validation message component and it has a four parameter inside this we can use this lambda to provide this model dot username we'll copy this thing and add it after password and we'll simply say for underscore model dot password now we are ready our username and password elements are ready now we need a login button so we'll again say dave class mb3 inside this we are going to have a button type submit we want to submit this form on this we are going to add a couple of btn classes btn btn success and here we'll just say login save everything and now we should be good now when we log in if there is no data annotation validation error it should call some method okay so here on edit form we'll say on valid submit we'll say login is sync we'll call this method so let's define this method here we'll say private async task login async okay in here we can simply go to the api and call that login endpoint which we just created okay so right now first thing let's see if all this setup is working and maybe before that when we are logging in let's uh disable this form 
when we are in logging process for that what we can do we can simply have a flag here private bool let's say is loading or is busy and when it comes to this login async method first thing we'll set is busy to true then for now let's have a delay task dot delay let's say of two seconds once we implement our api uh, connect our api to this thing then we don't we will not need this task dot delay right now i'm having it so that we can see this is busy flag after this we'll say is busy to false okay all right now let's use this is busy so on this button what we'll do we'll render a different set of button if uh, this is busy different button basically so if right now if this is not busy that means this is the default state we'll use whatever button we right now have if that's not the case that means it is busy that means it is right now we have already clicked on this button and this is in process of sending that api call or it is awaiting the response for that let's simply copy this button change this in button type submit to just button add a disabled flag class let's say button secondary and instead of this login text we'll say logging in dot 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 so that it shows that something is something different is happening right now all right so i guess we are good we can mm, try it out okay so save everything the slash auth slash login this is the thing so let's start it we'll implement that logic later when uh, it by default opens this slash auth slash login if the user is not logged in right now it will just open the home page but we need slash auth slash login and we have this ugly username and password this box let's quickly do this let's have something here so on this call smx let's do this let's simply have a border or maybe let's have a shadow as well shadow lg and border save everything let's start we need slash auth slash login and we can see this ugly box again we need to have some spacing from top but right now at least we can see it if i press login you see we have these errors if i provide something here so we need to have that email address verification uh, validation as well abc.com let's have some password if i log in you see logging in and after that it comes back so at least these things are working now let's have some text heading for this page and then yeah have that email address verification uh, validation and some spacing from top all right so we are here inside this call sm we will have a div class m y 3 so that from top and from bottom we have this three spacing and here we'll simply have a h1 we can have some styling if you want to but right now we are good with login and let's say blazing quiz just this all right cool save it and let's run it slash auth slash login and we can see this login blazing quiz username password and this thing this again does not look good but at least better than before cool we can see all this <coughs> let's add the email validation uh, data annotation validation on this login dto on this username after required we can say email address and we can also use the data type data type dot email 
save it and now we should be good let's maybe change this as well so this uh this head thing h1 class on this we'll say let's say h3 and after this i'm going to have or maybe let's have just mt3 from the top and for bottom i'm going to have a hr tag here which will have default spacing from both of the sides top and bottom let's see how it looks let's do this for until we are working with this so we'll change the default startup url to this auth login only so that we can go to web properties launch settings and here we are using this https profile so here in this we can use https we can have launch url okay this should be auth slash login without uh leading slash okay so auth slash login save it now if you run it it should directly open this auth slash login page for this web so you see it is opening auth dot login we'll change it later but right now okay it looks a lot better now we have still that validation if we do this it's not a valid email address yes so email address valid is here abcd at gmail.com then some password and logging in and after it came back to login so we are good with this now now next thing we'll add the api functionality or we'll connect this login page to our api 